Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video we are going to be going over the new banner with Zack and Sephiroth, and also go through kind of a bunch of these notices. I think there were like five new notices, plus the two they've pinned at the top. Uh, real briefly, the changes are this. In the events, they've added a third exchange shop, Silver Wheel 2, and nothing new. Uh, they've given us more copies of two weapons that we already had, but no new weapons. Pretty good rewards though, and you know, a reason to keep playing the event. So I'm pretty happy with it. it I would have liked to have seen a third weapon, but it's okay. I'm pretty good with that. Along with this, they have introduced a couple new solo missions, Night of Judgment Ruin EX2 and Night of Judgment Ruin 5. That's pretty exciting. However, they didn't introduce a new co-op stage, which I don't know, feels a little bit awkward to me. Moving on, there are Crisis Dungeons that have been reopened for anybody who didn't get a chance to do them originally or maybe didn't get the score they wanted. There's Mako Reactor 1, Patapilly Sea Cave, Logue Ruins, and Caw Pine Caverns. You can see here, I still need to get an S plus on Patapilly Sea Cave. Um, so yeah, just note that those are now open for the next 40 days. That's plenty of time to get those finished. If you're new and you would like a guide on any of these, I have guides for all four of them. Just go to my channel. Uh, there's a playlist called Crisis Dungeons and you can find them all easily there. One last thing to note is that there is uh, still a pretty good um, purchase here for any light spenders who are really being picky and want the best value for their crystals. Uh, for 300 red crystals, they have another double five-star guaranteed draw along with a 10. I mean, this is a really good value, uh, just something to point out. And without any further delay, we will get into the banner review. <clears throat> this time, we're looking at Sephiroth, we're looking at Zack, and we're just going to go ahead and get started with Zack. Looking at his costume, kind of the same thing I always think about Zack costumes. Uh, it's not bad, but I'm not in love with it. In fact, I don't know, I don't really like it all that much. Still think the Christmas outfit for him was by far the best outfit that they've done for him. The sword looks cool though, so I'm pretty excited about that. All right, Guardian style is what this outfit's called, and what does it do? Flame Blade Arcanum, so that's pretty good. 35% bonus damage to fire, uh, magic attack plus five. This is actually really good because Zack has like one of the best um, fire R ability weapons, Crystal Sword Z or something I think it's called. It's like one of the best fire R abilities in the game as far as its max, you know, level of R ability. Um, you know, so yeah, Zack is really good with fire, I think. And this is really good on him. It's not good for my account, or at least it's not necessary because I have to be a little bit choosy um, because I went hard on the New Year's banner with Cloud and Sephiroth. So I have the fire Arcanum for uh, Cloud. I have the fire Mastery for Sephiroth. I have Sky Splitter at OB6. Um, Radiant Edge I have at like OB2, and I'm gonna be wishlisting that on whatever banner I draw on. So I think this is really good. I think for some people, if you main Zach, it'd be great. But for me, uh, I don't I don't have the resources to go for it. Stream Guard, though, is the weapon. And okay, now we're seeing boost magic attack all allies. So in the previous banner with Cloud and Glenn. We saw the boost physical attack, and now we're going to see boost magical attack, which makes a lot of sense. I think most of us were expecting that, uh, and now we've got it. Being a little bit critical and honest, the fire potency on this, though, OB10, only 26, not that great. Not that great. So, I mean, it's obviously, it's better than a lot of other potential R abilities they could have thrown on this, uh, but... You know, all in all, I think you're mostly wanting it for this. Uh, and I'll be honest, 46 points means that it's level 6 at OB10 um, as a main weapon. I mean, that's that's pretty significant. Um, here, I, I find this interesting what they've done. So we this isn't the first time we've seen this HP threshold stuff. This is usually something they want to throw on a weapon that they kind of think is like really powerful to like nerf it a little bit. Uh, but 70% is a pretty high number. And, you know, 
honestly, it's a pretty big difference to me versus 50%. Because 50% is a health threshold that most of the time you're going to try to stay above naturally. You're going to want to heal units when they're below 50%. 70%? I don't know. Depending on the content, you might not feel the need. I don't know how much that'll come into play. It's one of those things, again, practically speaking, where you need to really kind of be able to play with it to find out over time. But it is something that I would keep an eye on. As far as damage goes, uh, I'm going to bring up a calculator here and look up uh, 850% times 1.2 means that it does 1,020% magic fire damage at OB10. I mean, that's uh, that's good. I'm, I'm impressed with that. 710 times 1.2 again, um, 852% at OB6. That's good. I have no qualms with that whatsoever. The magic attack stat on this, I think, is pretty high. I mean, at least I feel pretty good about it. And as for Materia Slots, Magic Attack Boost, Magic Attack Boost, and X Sigil Boost, uh, yeah, it's what I would expect out of a weapon like this. So I do think this is a strong weapon. And, you know, I think, man, pairing this with, like, Crystal Sword Z, it's it's a pretty big deal. It, there's a lot of fire potency going on, and it's going to hit pretty hard. Again, for me, though, in my account, it's, it's not, it doesn't really fit in, because I'm not going to take out Sephiroth or Cloud in my fire builds. But... That doesn't mean that it's not good. Also, the fact that it's magic damage instead of physical means it is still definitely viable even with a team like mine. I just have to be pretty choosy about what it is that I go for. Moving on to Sephiroth, this is the one that I'm most excited about. Even the costume starting out, this is, in my very, very humble opinion, the best costume that we've seen for Sephiroth. Like, holy shit. This looks really good. Uh, every other one to me, every almost every single other costume we've had is a little bit too flamboyant for me. And I'm not saying that that's not everybody else's cup of tea, but it's just not mine. I even love the katana here. Probably the next best costume to me would be the one that he got for the New Year's uh, banner, the Fire Mastery one. Uh, that's the one I mostly wear on him, but. Man, if I had this, this is definitely being the number one that I'm using. So, very good. It's called Lethal Style, and it gives magic ability mastery. So, this is the exact same thing, only the magical version, I should say, of what Tifa's cowgirl costume did for the collab banner. Uh, that was physical, this is magical, and I think that that is quite strong for all the reasons I mentioned back in the video on Tifa's outfit. Boost HP plus 10. Yeah, I'm here for it. I think that's always good. And so I think this is a great costume. Protector's Blade, his weapon. This this weapon is, in my opinion, is bonkers good. Like, holy crap, this is amazing. I'll go ahead and show it at OB10. I like the stats on it. 667 magic attack, quite high. I mean, it's hard to say, though, because now it's 120 versus 90, and I still have the level 90 stats in my mind, but it feels pretty good to me. Uh, as far as materia goes, you know, everything is good. They haven't gimped it in any way with that. So let's look at the R abilities. Same level of plus 46 magic attack to all allies as the Zack weapon, but instead of only 26 to a specific, uh, you know, elemental ability, it's plus 39 magic ability potency, which is huge, right? I would say that there's a lot of people that if they have like an OB6 Sun Umbrella, for example, they probably run that as a sub weapon on Sephiroth all, as much as they can, purely because it's got boost magic attack up here and it's got boost magic ability potency, which we all know is really good for trying to boost those numbers. And I mean, 39, that means as a main weapon, it's just giving him level five right there. Now, obviously that's OB 10, but even at OB six at 27, I mean, this is a solid weapon. And then this here, honestly, maybe the strongest attack C ability that I've seen yet in this game. Why? Because, okay, let's just put it this way. It hits all enemies. Most weapons that hit all enemies are only hitting 
500 or just above, like maybe 540% at OB10. This is doing 500% at 5 star. That That's nuts to me. And then at OB6, 740% to all enemies. At maxing out at 9. I mean, that is, that's crazy. Those are like the numbers of weapons that hit single target units before the power creep set in. Which is just nuts. And then, just to make sure that it's still extremely powerful, they're like, you know what though? If you're only targeting a single enemy, yeah, we'll give you 30% more damage. So at OB6 here, you can take that 740 times 1.3, and you're looking at 962% to a single enemy. And then at 900 here, we can do the same thing and multiply by 1.3, 1170. So this weapon is extremely, <laughs> extremely relevant. Um, I love that it's actually a hard hitting weapon to all enemies, and then also still viable, very viable for single target. Um, really thinking about all the times in crisis dungeons, especially the ranked ones, where you have to make that choice on, do I clear the ads or not, right? And everybody knows if you have a really good AOE weapon, it makes that decision so much easier. This, to me, is the best AOE weapon that we've seen in the game. The fact that it's also the first magic non-elemental damage weapon that we've had that I can think of that's, that goes this high on damage uh, makes it really good. And it's also being paired with these. So this to me, obviously it's not the first magic non-elemental damage weapon period, right? But it's the, it's the one that kind of reminds me of the FF9 collabs of, you know, the last Tifa weapon. It doesn't go quite as high on the top, top end but it's pretty close and I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. Uh, the only other thing I really have to say is the fact that, okay, so this is, to me, it's a must pull, I think, but not for everybody. And here's where I'm gonna go with this. So we have two banners. One banner is centered around Cloud and Glenn, uh, Cloud being probably a main in a lot of people's compositions, the other being Sephiroth probably a main in pretty good amount of people's compositions. So the difference is this, when you're looking at these weapons, Cloud's weapon, the physical attack all allies, I mean, that's really good. I actually think this, the physical attack all allies is even better on Glenn, but either way, um, the, the difference is to me, if I'm, if I was gonna pull on only one banner, these are the things that I'd be looking at. One, how do you want to benefit your team? Right? I think most of us have good physical attack teams, and especially free to play or light spending people. And the reason is because the game has kind of pushed physical attack over magical attack thus far. Uh, all of the best, you know, collaboration weapons were all physical based. Uh, a lot of just the weapons that they've been pushing out that have the best stuff on them have been typically physical based. All right. Uh, and more characters have more physical base weapons than magic. So at this point in the game, that makes sense. So getting the boost physical attack to all allies may fit in with more of your strongest team comps. Whereas the boost magical may shore up the weaknesses that you might have in certain comps. Okay. Here is another thing to consider. This weapon is really good. The one thing I don't like about it is it's ice based. There's been a lot of ice-based people already, and when you don't need this ice potency, it's kind of awkward to stick in, right? Like, ideally, you would want to set everybody up with weapons that both our abilities matter. And there's going to be a lot of times where this ice potency just doesn't matter. There's also a lot of times if you wanted to put it on as a main weapon where physical ice damage here doesn't matter, um, or it might even be possibly a hindrance. Whereas going over to Sephiroth's weapon, you know, um, it's all around good, right? Because it has the magic ability potency and the non elemental damage. So I think it's more flexible. And therefore, if when I'm thinking about summoning, I usually like the reason I went so hard on Tifa's gloves, for example, is because 
I saw with Zidane's sword originally and the Amaranth gloves, which I still use all the time as much as possible. I saw the flexibility of those weapons, right? How you can go into something that maybe takes a certain, you know, when enemy has a certain weakness, but you're not really good with that weakness. But if you've got the non-elemental stuff high enough, they can do the job. So to me, that's how I would probably go about doing it. Um, that's just kind of where I am. And I went ahead and set my wish list here. I, I'd like to do a little bit more thinking uh, before I make my final decision on which one of these to pull for. Uh, it's likely going to be this banner here because I don't think I have enough crystals to do both. Um, I'm going to have to think about that. But in the meantime, I would like to know if you've pulled how your pulls went. I'd like to know what you think of the banner. If you haven't pulled on either banner yet, I would really like to know what your thought process is and if you've come to a decision now or if you're going to wait a little bit longer. There is still two little bit over, I guess, two more weeks uh, of this event. There could be a third banner. It is possible. Um, who knows? So I'd like to know all of that. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.